speaker is a young man by the name of Tyler Newcomb. And for those of you who are some of the older researchers, uh, uh, I think Tyler is uh, uh, carrying on his father's legacy. And I made the mistake last night. I, I asked him, I said, when did his father pass? Well, his father's still alive. So. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, uh, he has a wonderful book out. And uh, uh, we're going to get him up here to give you some information about his father and the legacy that he's carrying on. So would you uh, please welcome Tyler Newcomb. Thank you very much, Casey. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My father and I share the same name. I have curse. I go by the middle name, Tyler. And, uh, you know, differentiate between the two of us when we were in the same household. Hey, Fred. It's not me. My father was a very talented graphic artist, advertising uh, agency director, and... Um, as such, when he first became interested in this case, he came up with this humorous cartoon, which I think was printed in the L.A. Free Press back in 1967. And I was there the moment, um, yeah, okay, everybody get the joke here? I was there the moment uh, in June of 1966 at the breakfast table uh, when Dad was earnestly reading the L.A. Times front page, and there was a, a book review by Robert J. Donovan of a new book out called Inquest by Edward J. Epstein. And when he finished, he got up and started pacing the kitchen floor. Oh my God, somebody else might have killed Kennedy. And from that point on, our lives were both changed forever. It began in, in uh, 66, and eventually, uh, next slide, it culminated in the uh, writing of a manuscript that I understand this is the updated one I don't have a picture of the original manuscript but it was on eBay recently for $4,000 because only 110 of them were ever printed and they were explicitly stamped not for sale for law enforcement only or other investigative bodies and the, uh, the copy that was for sale was uh, Senator Russell Long's copy signed by him and apparently, uh, the conservatives love my father's book. They're both hated. For some reason, uh, Barry Goldwater gave a glowing review of it, and Jesse Helms. <laughs> and to my father's consternation, being on the far left, um, he, didn't, he didn't like it, but he'll, he'll take it. And um, it, Dad uh, developed a relationship with a muckraking newspaper publisher. Of a, man, of, a, of a newspaper called Probe in Santa Barbara, and he and Perry Adams, political scientist and a librarian, uh, joined forces to eventually take the articles that they wrote and put it into book form, and that is what became Murder From Within. So I'm going to give a brief overview of the first two chapters of Murder From Within. The uh, next slide, and this is the centerpiece. Uh, chapter one. It is something the Warren Commission either ignored or never looked at, even though Marina Oswald testified her husband Lee was reading a Dallas morning newspaper, quote, on or around April 23rd, 24th, and got up excitedly to get his gun, saying, I want to go see the vice president. Now, this later became the Nixon incident because Marina thought. He wanted to go out and meet with Vice President Nixon, whom she thought was Vice President for some reason from her experience in the Soviet Union. That's the only Vice President she knew. And it's, it's written up in the Warren Report as the Nixon incident, even though Nixon wasn't in town. All the Warren, Warren Commission had to do was check the newspapers, and I'm sure they did. And they came upon this, and I, they just flushed it. Nixon wasn't in town, but on April 24th, the very day that Oswald goes to New Orleans, suddenly, Linda Johnson is announcing the entire trip in November 
43 days before Kennedy had even talked about coming to Dallas. He's prematurely announcing it. He outlines the whole trip. He makes the curious statement when talking about and defending his president that he's like a pilot and piloting, piloting the country through bad weather, you don't go up and knock him in the head. At least wait until next November before you shoot him down. And that's a direct quote from LBJ. On the same day, Oswald takes off for New Orleans. And from that point on, there is coordination, apparently, between uh, press announcements, announcements about the trip and Oswald's movements, both leaving and coming back to Dallas and going to Mexico. Next slide. What is amazing about uh, Oswald's early October hunt for a search for a job is the Dallas Police Department found in Oswald's rooming house a map on it of Dallas with some X marks on it, and Oswald said, oh my god, that's where I heard there was work. Don't tell me this thing happened near one of those X marks. Yeah, one of them was on the depository. Well, if you, if you look into the complete record in the 26 volumes, there were a total of 10 jobs that Oswald was known to have applied at in Dallas in October. And what is amazing is how many streets are there here in Dallas? Hundreds? Dozens? Dozens? All of them line up on the one of two likely motorcade routes before those routes were even decided upon or made public. What, is the, what are the odds of that? Oswald's looking for work up and down the two likely motorcade routes because they hadn't decided whether they were going to speak of the trademark which Connolly wanted, or the women's building. Next slide. It's no secret murder from within. It's a, uh, points a long finger at uh, both the Secret Service and Lyndon Johnson. And um, the question that I'm going to, in, in chapter two, which is the motorcade the setup, um, the pictures of the various vehicles in the motorcade that were taken that day had a 3 by 5 car in the window uh, at the front showing what number they were supposed to be. Now, <clears throat> whenever you go to a concert, you have your, op your opening acts, two or three of them, and then your featured event. What, what was strange about this motorcade was your main event opens the whole parade, and then all the other acts, the lesser acts, the congressman, the mayor, the vice president, are all after. Who's going to hang around for them? You just saw the president. You save your best for last. And number seven is, is printed on, on the, the limousine. Two and three for the congressional delegation. One was the mayor. And uh, four or five was the vice president. But at the last minute, you want to play the sound file? This is a... Uh, Tom Dillard, who was in the press. I think you're one of the people who was somewhat annoyed at the position of the uh, press car was put in so far in the back. Oh, quite. Uh, I, was, I was disappointed because it's customary. It had been customary in the past to put a flatbed truck uh, in front of the press for, for a, a, a more or less and selected newsman. And I, I was Well, that that reason the the, uh, the placement of the limousine at the front of the parade separates the president from professional photographers by a good 200 yards. That, that is why there's no professional photographs taken that day, even there sh though there should have been. So that's their job. But they weren't there. They were too far in the back where the president normally would have been. 
And the um, question is why? There's the only professional photograph taken up in Dealey Plaza was James Alka's pictures. But he happened to run up there at the last minute. I'm going to skip over the shooting episode. That's uh, entirely too controversial. But um, uh, I'm going to stick with, uh, again, the Secret Service and how they manhandled the evidence afterwards, uh, starting with the washing out of the blood spatter evidence on the, in the limousine. And next slide. The limousine windshield, which uh, several news reports, there was a bullet hole, a through and through bullet hole in the windshield. And we found uh, there were three Dallas police officers that were guarding that uh, limousine in Parkland, and they were standing right next to it. And so I'm going to play two of their telephonic interviews, and this is the first one. This is Harry Freeman, who's a cycle cop up at the front of the parade. And go ahead. Ellis. 